Okay. Okay, hi. Um, welcome to Creative Mornings. Um, we're the Victoria chapter hosted through the Victoria Arts Council. Uh, my name is Laura Dutton. I'm the Director of Community Programs at the Victoria Arts Council. And in a moment, I'll turn it over to Kosar, our Program Coordinator, who will introduce our guest speaker today, Ashley Howe. Um, thank you to the DOC, Center for Social Impact, for hosting us today. It's really nice to be in this space. Um, before we begin, we want to acknowledge with deep respect the Lukwangan speaking peoples uh, on whose traditional territory we operate, and the Songhees, uh, Wissanich, and Esquimalt First Nations, um, whose historical relationship with the land and diverse cultural practices continue to this day. So I'll turn it over to Kosar. Thank you, Laura. Uh, I'm going to run us through some slides that are for Creative Mornings. Welcome to Creative Mornings. August's theme is pride, and pride is a powerful affirmation of authenticity. It gives us the grace to show up as ourselves and live in alignment with our values. It embraces every shade of our longings, our regrets, our hopes, these beautiful and powerful things that make us who we are. Pride is when you stand tall and say, this is who I am. Pride is when you reclaim the parts of your identity that others might have scorned. Pride is when you raise your voice in defense of someone who is powerless, saying, enough. Because that someone might just be yourself. How will you unfurl yourself fully? How will you extend safety and solidarity so that we all may be unapologetically ourselves? Uh, this theme was picked by the Palm Beach chapter of Creative Mornings, and the uh, illustration is by Kayla Griffin. One of the sponsors of Creative Mornings is MailChimp. Uh, MailChimp works with a lot of entrepreneurs. Uh, this month, they have published a report wherein agencies and freelancers shared their le learnings and helped provide a report of uh, global perspectives on the current state of industry. And so you can go to their website to get some of that data. Um, and then I should say that the way people find out about Creative Mornings is through word of mouth. So please bring your friends or introduce us and tell them they can join online as well. As you probably know, uh, Creative Mornings is actually under the umbrella of the Victoria Arts Council. Um, and our sponsors are the City of Victoria, the CRD, as well as the BC Arts Council. As well, uh, we want to say thank you to HCMA, which is an architecture firm that designs buildings, brands, and shared experiences that connect people. They're also our sponsors. Uh, and I should say that in August, we've been hosting a residency called Reclaim, which is a public arts residency in our main gallery, uh, the Pat Martin Base Gallery at 1800 Store Street. And we have had Jermaine Co, an experienced public artist who's been leading a cohort of five artists that are just starting out in public art. And so on August 30th, which is Wednesday, I think, five to seven, we have an open house that you can join and see what they've been up to and talk to them about their projects that they've come up with. Additionally, um, we have satellite, uh, a, a number of community satellite galleries around town, including the Victoria International Airport, and Greater Victoria Public Libraries, and also the dock, which is where we are today. So you can visit our website for more information on these locations. Without further ado, please welcome our speaker today, Ashley Howe. Ashley is the dedicated executive, executive director and lead instructor of Supply, Great, uh, Supply Victoria Creative Reuse Center, a nonprofit organization with a mission to redistribute used art office and school supplies, along with cast off materials from businesses while providing creative reuse education to youth and adults. With a deep passion for humans, the planet, art, education, and equity and inclusion, Ashley is driven to build a strong community and empower its members with the resources and knowledge needed to foster self-sufficiency and integrate sustainable thinking into the creative process. Ashley received the Unsung Hero Award at Saanich Arts, Culture, and Heritage Awards for their work in threading together the artistic community through environmental education and access to sustainability 
uh, sustainably repurposed art supplies and Supply Victoria's dedication to sustainability earned them the title of 2022 Greenest Retailer at the EcoStar Awards. Fantastic. And in our talk today uh, on Pride, we will discover how Supply fosters an inclusive and vibrant community hub, diverting materials from the landfill to support artists, students, and teachers. With a strong focus on inclusion, Ashley will delve into the pivotal role of diverse voices in addressing and engaging in climate action for environmental, environmental justice. We will explore some of the exciting ways that supply serves as a resource for creative members of the LGBTQ community, providing more affordable and sustainable materials and education. Delve into thought-provoking questions like, what role do artists play in climate action? And is reuse truly better for the environment? As we celebrate the creativity that shapes our community and drives positive change. Don't miss this opportunity to engage in a meaningful conversation about the significance of creativity in shaping a more sustainable and inclusive future for Victoria. So Ashley, I'm gonna hand it off to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kosai. I love the reading about Pride in the beginning. Thank you so much, me. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I will just have to... Um, Okay, so I'd like you to imagine in your mind, you can close your eyes if you'd like, a healed people and healed planet. Um, do you have some kind of image? Let it percolate. Uh, what kind of people are making decisions? What's the health of the planet and everything living on it? Um, now you can start um, drawing those visions. It can be figurative or um, literal. You can draw on your paper throughout the course of this talk. I know that I can focus better sometimes when I have something to do with my hands. And those of you listening at home, if you have some art supplies lying around, just a sheet of paper and some coloring utensils will do. Um, so now we'll delve into my vision. So I see a world uh, where we take pride in protecting our planet, the resources, and all the people living on it, especially the most vulnerable populations. Um, I imagine a collective effort, everyone working together um, in an epic symphony driven by creativity and sustainability, where communities thrive as champions of environmental justice. Um, and today I'm here to take you on a journey um, through my organization that embodies this vision. Um, of artistic ingenuity, inclusive community building, and um, yeah, our commitment to the planet's future. So when I first got the topic of Pride to speak about, um, I was a little hesitant, uh, but I looked at the definition and um, realized that Pride runs deep for not the achievements of the organization, but the community that we've been able to foster. Um, and that's happened over the last five years and especially the last year. Um, I went to a quote by uh, social activist Greta Scott King who said the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. Um, and I have a, so much pride for our community that is, um, and I think we can all have a lot of pride um, in the compassionate actions of our community. And I'm constant, constantly struck with the generosity of our um, material donors, our um, shoppers, um, customers, students, um, our volunteers. And um, it's really energizing to be around. So a little bit about Supply. Supply is a registered nonprofit that redistributes used art office and school supplies and offers creative reuse education to youth and adults. Um, our mission is to divert materials from the landfill and put them into the hands of artists, students, and teachers. And we do this in order to craft a more sustainable, um, creative, and inclusive Victoria. Our vision for Victoria is to accelerate the adoption of sustainability by supplying the materials and knowledge needed to integrate sustainable thinking into the creative process. We have a number of programs that support these, 
this mission and this vision. Um, the material grant program um, is really fun for me to see all the applications that come through. So we provide free material support for community building art projects. Mm -hmm. um, we divert materials from the landfill. We've been able to divert over 6,000 pounds since 2018 to over 4,000 individuals. Mm -hmm. Our volunteer program. I really wasn't expecting for this to be my favorite part of the organization, but it definitely is. Um, yeah, 90% of our volunteers and board members identify as women and non-binary. And we've grown from just a handful of really dedicated people that were willing to sit in a freezing shed in the winter without electricity <laughs> or heat to um, now over 40 active volunteers and nine board members and seven working committees. Um, there's a picture of us at the beach at our last volunteer party. It was really, really windy, but fun. Um, our creative use education, uh, it's, it's a unique model. It's like art meets environmental education. We've been able to introduce this to over 750 students. Um, the largest program is our center. So it operates like a thrift store for art supplies and you can come visit us. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And we accept donations 11 to 12 um, in accordance to our material acceptance guidelines. So please check those out. Um, and then our online store, which is um, the newest offering. Uh, it's a completely separate inventory from our um, center and we offer bike courier delivery. So it's like a zero carbon delivery service. Mm -hmm. So I know if you guys know we have a waste problem, but I'm just going to talk about it a little bit more specifically. Um, so 120 tons every day in the CRD region. A significant portion of these materials are materials that artists, students, and teachers struggle to afford. So supplies leveraging Victoria's reusable ways to provide those materials to those people that really need them. And um, like I said, I have a lot of pride in our community. I'm filled with pride for um, the justice, equity, diversity, inclusion kind of efforts. I think that's part of the reason why we have such a strong and welcoming and respectful community. Um, and then I'll just highlight some of the ways that we do that. Um, so I think affordable materials, making things more accessible for all people, regardless of income. So we have sliding scale options for a lot of things. And then things are already cheap. We price them 50 to 75% below retail value. Um, the material grant program um, prioritizes projects led by people in, um, from marginalized communities. Our online store with the bike delivery um, increases accessibility for people with mobility issues. We recently upgraded our facility to include an accessible entrance. Um, and then we have different inclusive holiday displays that we use with a chart that we have. And then here's a cute quote from a volunteer. I love volunteering because I'm, I'm meeting new people in the art scene, get to work with materials I love, and the environment feels supportive. And I hear that a lot from our volunteers, how supportive the environment feels. And I'm really happy to hear that. So um, meet Allie, uh, she's on the right, Hazel's, uh, sorry, Jasmine's on the left, um, but Allie is a reuse artist and she makes multimedia collages with pre-loved magazines and um, recyclables. Mm -hmm. And she first participated in our, um, the first time I got to know her was when she submitted some artwork to a creative reuse art show that we hosted. So the premise of the show is all materials must be made from 80% found, reclaimed, repurposed materials. Um, and then after that engagement, she became a volunteer at Supply and now is a really valuable member and contributor to you know, be able to run the center without her volunteers. And now she... Um, volunteers at local repair and reuse initiatives like Fairfield Gonzalez Community Center's um, Recrafting Circle and then Plenty Collective. They have this really cool free store 
Um, so the ripple effect goes beyond the individual mm -hmm. and promotes environmental consciousness by giving people the tools and knowledge they need to create um, more sustainable Victoria. Um, I just wanted to touch on this because it's um, this healed planet that you're envisioning for the one that I envision that it's not possible without this. So environmental justice, um, it's, it highlights the importance of diverse voices in um, uh, fighting climate change and um, marginalized communities are disproportionately affected by climate change. So um, lots of research shows this, that women, BIPOC, um, 2S LGBTQIA plus communities are more likely to be placed in um, next to polluting um, plants and industries. They're more likely to be exposed to um, health, health risks. Um, they are, um, there's discriminatory housing practices where the interior of their houses are not as safe. Um, they're more likely to experience the negative effects of extreme weather. Um, so yeah, you can't have environmental justice without social justice. And the water we drink, the air we breathe, these are all governed by industries and organizations. Um, which are ultimately governed by people. So that's why that representation is so important to protect these vulnerable populations. And we also need to tackle these big issues with a lot of creativity. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, yeah, like sharing resources is one idea, um, but it's my personal belief that, yeah, a healed people will be able to heal the planet. Um, when I got the topic pride, I couldn't help but think about the 2SLGBTQIA plus community as a shining example of the definition that I read at the beginning. And um, I just wanted to share, um, Supply supports a lot of com communities, but I want to highlight some of the resources for this community at Supply. Um, so yeah. We have um, our Creative Review Center. It just happens, I don't think it just happens to be, I think it is a, a safe space. So we have, it's a very queer space. A lot of our volunteers and um, shoppers, the artists that come through there are queer and um, by providing low cost material to these makers and then volunteer opportunities. Um, we also offer material grants. Uh, most recently uh, we gave um, some materials to a trans and gender, gender diverse youth art therapy group. And then all of the pieces that they made, they showed at the Fernwood Art Gallery, which must have been very exciting for a young person to have an art show. Um, and we also do creative reuse workshops. We did a queer date night DIY keepsake boxes with the Victoria T Tool Library. Um, I was inspired by uh, the last place that I worked, which was the Rebuilding Center in Portland, Oregon, where we had like a wood shop and started hosting workshops for um, this community and women and how they just kind of took off. They're really popular. And it's because people aren't um, um, socialized to be handy or how to work with tools. Mm -hmm. So it was really cool to be able to provide a space that was low pressure and just chill and fun. Um, and then our pop-up, which is in the past, we offered lots of free materials for different organizations, including Queer Craft Renewed, which is a really cool organization in town. They do free drop-in um, workshops for all ages for queer folks and their families. Um, so I have a lot of pride in the physical space that we um, reside in. And I think it's just so cool and so important. Um, so, and then to think that we started in a 200 square foot shed, the top image, um, and then how impactful such a small space could have on the community with that 200 square feet for those short months, we were able to support 
over a thousand makers. We made connections with the tiny town residents there. We were able to support tons of nonprofits and art groups that would otherwise maybe not be able to do the art therapy to the populations that they serve. Mm -hmm. And then we grew to a 2000 square foot building. Um, the bottom, it's beautiful, it's art deco. There's tons of stuff happening. There's 80 artists, uh, four art galleries and the Victoria Tool Library. Um, yeah, and the space is vital for the arts and culture community um, and has spurred so much creativity. I see artists in that building's work all over the place now. And the open houses that they have quarterly have thousands of people come through. And I think it just really demonstrates the need for something like this in Victoria. Um, affordable arts and culture space allows us to keep our prices a lot low, to accept more materials, which means we get to divert more materials, which means we get to provide more materials for um, low-income artists. And we're able to generate more sales so we can become less dependent on grants, which are kind of scary because you never know if you're going to get them. They're sort of waning support from private and public donors for operating um, costs. Um, we don't know what's going to happen to this beautiful Art Deco building, um, but I'm trying to manifest a new affordable arts and culture building for everybody. Um, so please let me know if you have anything. Um, yeah, and then the, the affordable arts and culture space also allowed us to host workshops in our space, close to our materials, shielded from the elements with running water. Trust me, scissors flying in the wind is not a good scene. I've it's happened before. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's awesome to have that space. And then we've got some upcoming workshops I just wanted to share with you. Um, so we've got Scrappy Last Saturdays, which is the last Saturday of every month for kids ages seven to 12 and their families. We have different instructors come and teach on different themes, um, like printmaking, stamp art. We're doing origami tomorrow morning. Um, and uh, we have community crafting circles. Those are typically on the last Thursday of each month. They're on different themes and just people come and bring all of their tips and tricks and get to come together in community. Um, we have three upcoming workshops with the city, uh, brews and baskets. So I'll teach people how to weave um, baskets using ethernet cords. Um, I'll sip on drinks at Herald Street Brewing book binding with salvage materials, creative use daisy chain bracelets. And all of these things, all of these workshops are um, to show people how to breathe new life into old materials and these useful, fun, creative self-expressions. Um, I'm also really proud of our growth. And in the last 12 months, we've been able to provide 45 thousand dollars in savings to um, Victoria's artists, students, and teachers. Mm -hmm. um, we've been able to divert 4,740 pounds from over 280 donors. We won the Greenest Retailer. Um, yeah. Is reuse really better, better for the environment? Okay, so I love this complex question that actually comes from a high school student. Um, it's like a it's a question about embodied carbon. And one of the reasons why I love working with youth is because they're not afraid to ask like bad questions. Um, and yeah, is reuse and recycling better for the environment or just not as bad as throwing things away? So now I incorporate the answer into pretty much all my workshops where I say, yes, um, reuse is better for the environment because it not only reduces the greenhouse gases that are caused by landfills, it also eliminates the energy, waste, and materials needed to create new things. And the less we consume, the lower the demand for those things as well. So, um, and there's lots of cool examples of uh, waste becoming resource. There's a Norwegian industrial park where they all share their waste outputs that turn into raw materials that just keeps it circular within that little circuit. Um, supplies looking at there's no fabric recyclers on the island which is really sad and shocking um, but perhaps setting up the infrastructure to be able to handle 
fabric recycling so we could turn it into polyfill, which is a useful product that other people could use for their projects. When I, do, is anyone familiar with Tana Hesse Coates, an author? Um, I saw him speak at Wordstock in Portland and he said something that really struck a chord with me and it was right around when I was thinking about what a creative view center could look like. Um, but he said, angle the thing you love towards the cause you care about. And for him, um, he loved writing and I think he used that tool and that passion to write about racial um, justice. And I just wanna echo those beautiful and smart words back to you guys. What do you love? What do you care about? Um, we can't do something about everything, but we can do something about something. <laughs> um, and one of the things that I'm personally really passionate about is helping young people deal with climate anxiety. Um, it can be stressful sometimes when you think about the whole climate crisis and you're like, what can I do as one little person? Um, how can I make a difference? And I'll share my personal take on how to deal with climate anxiety. And um, yeah, when we're dealing with um, climate anxiety in healthier ways, we can, I think, um, handle the facts of the situation. We don't have to water down the data for like our youth um, and soften it. Um, it allows us and our children to become more resilient so they can engage in climate action and not like go into overwhelm or shut down. So for step one, just recognize that I am only one person. I'm only a part of the solution. I can angle the thing I love towards the cause I care about. Uh, two, um, I can only control um, uh, what's within my personal sphere. I can't control what other people, what whether or not they think climate change is real. I can't change people's minds. I can't change policies overnight. I can't stop climate emergencies. Um, yeah, I do have control over um, how I spend my money. Um, yeah, my own thoughts, my own behaviors, um, how, how I vote, and um, I can support Indigenous-led um, climate action. Um, yeah, I have power for which resources I use and how much. I can start a conversation. There's lots of things I do have control over, but there's quite a few that I don't. And then three, art therapy for me is a really helpful tool, but just any kind of outlet to be able to deal with the disturbing emotions. Um, yeah, and it's especially cool for me when we're talking about climate issues to use more intentional and thoughtful and meaningful materials, like reclaimed materials. That just makes a lot of sense to me. Um, okay, and then what is the artist's role in climate action? Art communicates and materials inspire. I think that art has this beautiful ability to affect positive change. It can change social social norms. It can raise awareness about climate issues. And then when we think about the materials, sustainable practices lessen the environmental footprint. And I already talked about our art show, so I don't need to talk about it again. Um, at our center, we have two main types of customers. So people that are coming in to look for specific materials because they have a specific project in mind. And then we also have um, people that come in and are just like wandering around and getting like excited about the materials and like, what can I make from this? Um, yeah, so I'm personally inspired to encourage more of this second type. And um, I, I think we're lucky in Victoria because we have so many nice art supplies that need a home. Um, but there's tons of uh, non-traditional materials that I'd like to allow people to see in a different light. And the Victoria Arts Council, the bottom image, the Reclaim um, Artists in Residency that CoStar touched on before um, was a really cool example of this. It was the highlight of my summer, honestly. <laughs> 
<laughs> besides getting engaged, I guess. <laughs> Um, but they all got a budget to spend on reclaimed materials and they came to supply and um, I got to show them around and it was, um, they just like picked out the weirdest things, like random pieces of plexiglass and metal and um, yeah, like a million little glass balls. And I was really hoping they would take this giant box of 3,000 red crayons, but they didn't. <laughs> Still sitting there, if anyone needs 3,000 red crayons. Um, but yeah, it's just really cool. Um, so to sum it all up, um, environmental justice goes hand in hand with social justice. And artists hold a powerful role in climate action. And through our creations, we can communicate complex ideas and inspire change. And the reuse of materials itself carries a message of sustainability. Um, okay, will you guys accept this challenge from me? Uh, so look around your house and your wastebasket, and you can even come to supply and find some stuff. Um, but let the materials sing to you and make something with those things. My second challenge is have a conversation about sustainability with someone. Um, a recent study just came out that showed that people want to be talking about this kind of stuff more than we actually are, but don't out of politeness or worrying that they'll say the wrong thing. So yeah, we can learn together. We can grow together. It, we don't need to be perfect. There's that famous quote, we don't need a handful of people doing zero zero waste perfectly, we need millions of people doing it imperfectly. Um, yeah, one step at a time, we can become more environmentally conscious. Maybe one day you'll be like the lady that came to my store with a tiny jar of garbage from the entire last year. Mm -hmm. But we'll just start where we're at. And um, yeah, angle the thing you love towards the cause you care about. And let your actions echo this world that you envision. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you. Congrats on your engagement. <laughs> but also, um, I mean, we can have a. I think we can have a conversation if uh, if everyone's in the room is eager. Um, I really enjoyed the hands-on aspect of this. Like, nice. if it does make me pay attention, but also like as I'm making something, think about where it came from. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I don't know, that's a really cool thing. And I think you touched on like workshops and community events also where people do that. So it's um, already very um, curious to join some of the things that you do um, because of the community aspect of it. Mm -hmm. like, just sitting and like sharing with people. And also um, I was wondering if we can maybe like elaborate a little about the climate climate um, because I have been really feeling it with the smoke, especially mm -hmm. it's unescapable, but uh, then it makes me think like younger people and kids must experience it so much mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious what you hear from folks or, you know, how you mentioned how like we should think about how we're one person. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I'm curious how that shows up for people who talk to you about it. Yeah. Um I think it's just it's cool when kids can be like really honest with you about their feelings and yeah. stuff. Um, to be honest, I'm not getting into that like super deep of combos like at our scrappy last Saturdays, but I think like in the talks that I've given with high school students and yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, and then like talking to our volunteers, our young volunteers, I think it's just really easy to get stressed out. I know I do. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, just giving. And I'm also thinking a lot about like uh, environmental education in schools. Mm -hmm. Like I went to a teacher's conference that was all about sustainability in Vancouver, mm -hmm. where they had the sustainability teens come and talk. They're so cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, they were talking a lot about that as an issue that their peers face. And 
Um, yeah, so I think it's just like a conversation that we need to have. And I think it's like our first instinct is to protect. Mm -hmm. But I think equipping kids with the knowledge and also the emotional processing tools to be able to handle that knowledge mm -hmm. is really important. Like you can't have one without the other. You can't be like, boom, like the <laughs> world's on fire. Yeah. And, stuff away and not have give them the emotional tools to be able to deal with that yeah. and then yeah I think a lot of schools um they don't they're not really teaching about these things yeah. but maybe it's because they don't know how I don't know but I'd love to offer my perspective with young people and just yeah give them that confidence to be able to deal with yeah it. yeah that's thank you for that and it like you said it's as the teacher is also it's important even like in a university level um we were just talking about like a list of resources that you, you say a class needs but how can those maybe be more flexible to include reused or reclaimed materials totally yeah last year we did free um back to school kits for low income families mm -hmm. and it was such a headache trying to figure out what is the common denominator materials for all of the classrooms yeah. it's basically nothing i mean yeah. like a ruler maybe yeah. Yeah. but they all want like different colored folders and yeah. specific types of pencils and it's like Okay. can we just go to the thrift store and use all of these materials that are already here yeah. why do we have to keep buying brand new school supplies every single year yeah. it's very expensive for the parents too it is you're right too it's so specific yeah and it feels really strange to, you know buy the material like buy a few glue sticks when there's a half a glue stick left you know what i mean like it is it is a strange process yeah and it's encouraging like these kits and using school supplies is a great yeah and great. also teachers often pay for their own classroom materials out of their own pocket too so they're like struggling so we have all this stuff we have no shortage of things yeah <laughs> let's let's make them available to the people that need them yeah i think going off of you know the conversation you're just having with costar about dealing with climate anxiety for youth I think what's so special about what you're doing too is that like so much climate anxiety happens up here, like our processing of all of these um, climate changes and issues about what we can do about it as one person is very emotional and cerebral and it takes place in our heads. But what's so great about these workshops and um, classes that you're doing is that there's like a hands-on tactile sort of result mm -hmm. of how, you know, these materials that you're using and reusing can become something new. And I think that's just so great because we're we're all stuck mm -hmm. dealing with climate anxiety in our head. And it's mm -hmm. nice to have an output out the hands. Yeah. I agree. Yes. Do you have any questions? Um, no, I really like the um, you can switch between your own ideal of a of a world to start mm -hmm. it with yeah. and then go back and forth and yeah have this aspect of hands on mm -hmm. from reason to the talk. That's, that was really fun. Nice. I'm so curious to see your job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you guys don't mind, I'd love to see. Sure. Cool. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I thought of it having cool. When I think of an ideal world, I Beautiful. think of it's digital. So good. <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought yeah, I talked a little bit about the idea. I thought about the connection between local and global mm -hmm. and the diversity mm -hmm. that like that decreases right now mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you hear a lot about bringing the local back. Which I think has a lot of value. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get my head around that. Totally. Yeah. Beautiful. I like that. I'll think about that too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you, hosting Ashley. me. It's been great. No. <laughs> and
And just one last question for you. Is yeah. there any, are there any supply, any particular materials um, that you desperately want and need at supply? Just like out of curiosity for people who are watching, like yeah. others, is there something that's really in the demand that you would love to see donated more of? It's those really, really basic things like glue sticks, scissors, scotch tape, um, printer paper in the package. Um, yeah, those are the things that we kind of always okay. need. We have lots of everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And we might even random items that they're like, you know, we'll have a mystery buyer. <laughs> <laughs> like, we have a mystery drawer for sure. Oh my yeah. God. We have a mystery teapot. Oh, we have a mystery team on our board. Wow. I can't tell you what it's about. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know who they are? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.